we think about the situation what has happened post karbala there is an event called karbala there is an event called post karbala and the whole story of post karbala is equally important if not more than the event leading up to the ashura and the battle of karbala post karbala has a history of continuation of the story of karbala because the intention of ibn ziyad was to stop the spread of the work of family of rasulullah finish the imama finish imam hussain and then stop everything and then they could continue they thought that they would trap it in the remote area in the jungle where nobody knew what that place was karbala was not known a very famous place so they said okay, this is the place we can trap imam hussain finish him everybody and then we will have our own way of doing things but the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was completely opposite to that little the new that miracle of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can happen at the time where it was needed to tell the world that doesn't matter the criminals the despotic rulers have one plan and allah has another plan because this is the prophecy of uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that my progeny will be killed in karbala why imam hussain's neck was being kissed by rasulullah when he was a baby when he was born so a lot of things are hidden from human's eye and brain but are known to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the beauty of this message of karbala 11th of muharram this gathering of women and children were being tied down in chains in ropes and imam sajjad who is the only surviving male member is an other miracle of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because if you imagine if you imagine so many people are making sure that nobody survive how can allah make this happen surely allah's plan is that that he says that in quran he is the one who gives life and he gives the death and it was a plan for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to secure the position of imam sajjad in the battle in the thick battle of karbala soldiers made an attempt they penetrated into the camps they attempted to and that's why bib zain of salam allah and i protected him but that was something miraculous because the effect of imam sajjad's teaching on people lasted for 35 years after karbala main work of imam sajjad was happened when he left karbala and came back to madina so post karbala there are two individuals one individual is bibi zainab salam allah alai she is the heroine of the karbala and the second surviving person is imam sajjad 
these are the two main players in this event because most of them were being slaughtered like a merciless so it, it, during the daytime gather together preparation happened and of course the Yazid wanted them in his courts in Shah so the procession was being prepared by the soldiers very meticulously they tried to tie the ropes and the ladies neck baby's neck Sukaina's neck has been tied down every time you know the people move it used to be a very tired and difficult and tedious journey imagine the heat the um, difficult circumstances of leaving their loved ones lying in the plains of Karbala and then moving towards Kufa and then from Kufa to Shah. This journey is an amazing journey in which a number of miracles happen. And it's proven that these were the people who were blessed by Allah subhanahu wa Because there was a lady who came following a poor lady following Bibi Zainab and keeps saying that, look, give us some, some, something, we are very poor, but they realized who she was. And the Bibi Zainab said that, look, we have been looted, we have nothing left, we have nothing but, I can promise you something, when our camel will move, just follow the steps of the footsteps of camel, you may find some gold, gold some money, money some, some some support from from us and these are the incidents written by various historians that this journey was incredibly difficult for particularly the children because sometimes the soldiers were so brutal that they are taunting maybe Sakina little girl by showing the head of her father and the heads were being raised on this throughout the church. Imagine that your loved ones are traveling with you on this spare, just bare heads. What kind of a procession it was. And it continued. Sometimes they will stop at some places and then go again. And when they stop and move, certain children will fall from the back of the camels, they would not stop them to collect them, to pick them up. This is the brutality of this journey. And they had to reach to Kufa and from Kufa to Shah. In Shah, well, they reached there. They were made to wait for a whole week. And when they entered the market of the Shah, they were declared that they are the people who revolted against Yazid. These are the, uh, what do you call it, Badi as we call them, uh, or, or people who did disobey the Yazid. And these are the, people had no idea who they were. People had no idea amongst them, who Mamsa Jaja And people were throwing, you know, hot water, stones, fire when passing the procession passes on the streets and the markets of Shah. So somehow the procession reached to the Shah, but in Shah they were subject to be humiliated, humiliated in the marketplace in front of palace, palace of Yazid. In front of them, they were asked to stay for a long time before the palace could be set up because it was meant to be made as a celebration point. It was declared that Yazid has won the battle and these are the people who revolted against Yazid and therefore they need to be exposed to those people who are prepared to receive them in a much more humiliating 
And when they were made to humiliate, made to sit outside the palace, chained, robed, it was a terrible, painful journey. There was a one chap who recognized Imam Sajjad. He went to Imam Sajjad and he says that, Yabna Rasulullah, I recognized you. What can I do? Is there anything I can offer you to do? And he said, come closer. See, my neck is being, it's, it's, it's bleeding, it's hurting. The, the chain on my neck is so tight. Torn the cloth that I'm wearing and put under the chain just to give me a little solace, a little comfort. And that man has actually did that job. This type of torture which had been inflicted upon the Imam Sajjad throughout the journey were very, very painful. The other aspect of this journey is that we need to understand that if Bibi Zainab Salaam would have not taken the responsibility of talking about it, we did not have news, we did not have microphones, we did not have facilities to communication. The only communication was the human communication. Human communication, which is Zainab Salaam Allah made sure that once we released from the prison of Yazid, we must be given a house where we can gather together the women and explain one of the conditions, one of the demands of the release was that they must be provided for a house, their property had to be returned back to them, the one that was looted, and she must mourn her brother and her family members and her church. That tradition was the foundation for the discussion of story of Kabbalah. She made sure that I have to educate people around me. I have to talk about it. I have to tell them, mourn and cry for my brother. Because that was the first time people heard that something happened in Karbala. Apart from that, people had no idea around that. And that was the intention of the enemies, the army of Yazid and Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. And Umar Sa'ad, that they will be finished off. And even if they are children and women are taken prisoners, how can they tell other people? How would the people would know? This is completely finished the story. But as I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had different plans for anything and everything. This message had to be carried over and will continue to carry over for centuries to come. Because under this message is hidden the salvation for the mankind. Under this message is hidden the teaching of Rasulullah, the teaching of Amir al the teaching of all I'm my lessons. Because this will be the foundation for the Imamat. Imam Sajjad is the founding cornerstone, you can say that, the founding person of the Imamat. He brought Imamat alive back when he was reached to Madinah. Madina. Of course he was not allowed openly. So he adopted a system of praying du'as. And in those du'as was my messages hidden. And he was communicating to the people through du'as in the book of Saifah Sajjadiyya. If you read the Saifah Sajjadiyya, you would know each and every dua has got a meaning in it. And people still today sometimes text me, I'm in trouble, I'm in short of money, can you make some dua? I said, open the dua number so It talks about exactly the same problem that you are asking. So to date, even after 1,400 years, people are blind enough not to know the beauty and the strong strength of those du'as hidden in Saifah Sajjadiyya. 
Today on the phone, it's not hidden anywhere. You don't need a thick book like this. People have done a lot of work to solve the problem. Sickness, du'a for sickness is there. Du'a for every occasion. This trouble, that trouble, because human life is full of trouble. And our Imam's relationship with our Imam is the salvation for our survival. Whatever the Allah has prescribed, the duration and the length of our time to this dunya, if we attach ourselves with those things like Sahih Sajjadiyya, like Amir al Mumineen's teaching in Najib al and all Imam's teaching, then we would be much happier, much content, and we live our lives at least with the satisfaction. And you may say that, what about the rest of the world who do not care about them? Majority of the Muslims don't care about them. I think in this day and age of technology, everybody is beginning to realize that they cannot avoid that. And even when they belong to different faith, they come to us, to Shia'as, to looking for some solutions. And those solutions are found by the gems which were left by our Imams. So this journey has got important stages of travel which was arduous. And why Imam Sajjad has been so... Somebody asked me why he has a two titles. His name is Imam Zain al abidin because he spent most of his time in sujood. He made most of his time praying during this journey. They had a stop and he made sure that he's allowed to pray. And then he reaches to Kufa. There's a stopover in Kufa. And then from there onwards to continue from the different direction all the way to Shah. 11th of Muharram is a difficult day for ladies and survival ladies and children who have been put on the back of the camel, dragged along on the ropes, necks tied, hand tied in the scorching heat of Karbala. And the scorching heat of that time it continued up to the time where you will see those effect of those torture when she releases, get released on the, uh, in the prison. She shows the, the actual marks on her arms which were being created the, uh, because of the rope. Bibi Zainab showed that the mark, dark mark of those ropes were being put around, around her. Still people in, in act. I know certain places people put chain around their necks symbolically replicating the movement of Imam Sajjad from Karbala to Sham to Kufa. And this is the love of those people who love our Imam so much that they like to replicate that even in this day and age, even in this time, after many thousands, hundreds of years have passed by, but people will continue to reenact and to respect and feel pain for the journey that has been taken by children and women of Imam, Imam Hussain. And Al Bayt has been tortured during this journey.